All right, welcome everyone to the December 15th, 2022 Helm Developer Call. Uh, for those of you who might be new here, we're going to run through announcements um, and then discussion topics, and then we'll get to assignments for the next call. Um, so with that, we have two announcements here around releases. Um, is Martin on? Martin's not on, so I can go ahead and... Uh, share the details of those. So we released Helm 3.10.3 .3 on Wednesday of this week. That's the normal day we normally do a release, but instead of being a normal patch release, it was a security release. Um, you can find the details in there. What I will say is that these were not externally reported, so to speak, from somebody who sort of found it. They were found through fuzz testing sponsored by the CNCF. So they were um, some cases that affect the SDK. They were found doing fuzz testing. Um, if you're just using the Helm client, we don't think they affect you. And But people who build long-running services on top of Helm could run into some situations. It's <clears throat> kind of more that edge case of fuzz testing, throwing random input at some functions, discovered some situations that we hadn't anticipated. Um, but that was 3.10.3 .3 and 3.11, which comes out in January, instead of being the second Wednesday, where we normally release on the second Wednesday of a month, um, in January, we release on the third Wednesday because it's a minor release following the last home or Kubernetes minor. And <clears throat> we cut a release candidate for those. And nobody's ready to cut a release candidate either while we're still on our break from the holidays or as soon as we get back. So it gets delayed to the third Wednesday of the month. Um, but that will be a minor release with new features. And those are the two announcements. Did anybody have anything else? All right, I'll take that as nothing. Then with that in mind, um, we have our first item up here, which is a demo. Is that Monocle? Yes. Hello. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Ole Lansmar, uh, CTO at Kubeshop, which is an open source accelerator for cloud native stuff. Uh, we're here to show you Monocle, uh, which is one of our open source projects. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen um, and pray that things work out. Can you see Monocle now? Or you can see something black. Okay, so uh, Monocle is basically a desktop tool um, that you install that has a, has a bunch of features related to uh, helping you work with manifests and Kubernetes configurations before you deploy them to your cluster. Uh, but it also has a bunch of cluster related features. Um, and in that vein, it has a lot of features related to customize and Helm. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little bit uh, what, what it can do for Helm, uh, specifically for Helm authors or people writing Helm charts and people who are deploying Helm charts into their clusters. So I've, this is just the launch screen. I'm going to, um, I've cloned the Flagger repo from the Flux project locally. Just opened that project here. Um, you can see it looks like you're somewhat like a, you know, uh, uh, other tools that you may be using in the space if you use visual tools. Um, left is a file tree. Uh, in the middle are all the Kubernetes resources that were found in all of these files. I can click around these. I can kind of see relationships between them, you know, deployments referring to things, et cetera. I don't, I'm not gonna dig in too deep into to all the ins and outs of Monocle because there's a lot there. I'm gonna go straight to the Helm panel here to the left. And this shows me uh, the four Helm charts that are available in this project somewhere in the folder structure. And I can see the values files, I can see the templates. Uh, obviously I can get some nice highlighting of template values. I can find template values, uh, references to properties that aren't actually in any property, uh, in any value files. I can obviously modify these templates and get kind of real time updates if I refer to a property that doesn't exist. And it's it kind of has a bunch of features to help you write your templates and get those right. Uh, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, so you don't have to figure out what spelling errors you might have made while you were doing that. Um, one of the really neat features here is what we uh, is a preview functionality. So basically, uh, this is the flagger main Helm chart. There's a default values files included. I'm just going to run preview. 
And what this does is that it runs the Helm uh, and Helm install with the dry run and then shows you the resources generated by Helm here in the middle. So these were the resources that Helm generated uh, based on that values file. So I can really easily just go back to the value file, make some changes, regenerate, and visually kind of really quickly see what, you know, what was generated, et cetera. Um, we've also integrated a bunch of validations, including Open Policy Agent. I don't know if you're familiar with OPA, but there's a lot of tools out there that use OPA for validations. Uh, we use the same configuration rules as a tool called Trivi, which you might be familiar with because they open source their whole rule set. So I'm just going to go in and enable all those rules here, all the rules you can kind of configure exactly which rule you want and, uh, want. and then you can see immediately here that we're getting some errors here inside the uh, in the YAML that was generated by Helm, right? So it's really easy for you to get, to preview the output from your Helm charts and then run your validations against that. So you know that what you might be deploying into your cluster, uh, you know, might, you, at least you're aware of kind of what you might be getting right or wrong. I'm just gonna disable those because they get somewhat annoying. Um, um, another nice feature is the possibility to compare the output of Helm charts. So as you were still looking at the, um, uh, the output from, uh, this values file, there's another, I just created another one where I set the mesh provider to Istio. And there's a compare panel here where I can basically do a Helm preview. Let's do the house chart, use values. And then here we'll do a Helm preview values chart flagger, but we'll use the Istio one. And then it'll show you kind of what the differences are between the uh, file resources generated. And you can also, uh, you don't have to have, I can compare this not to how preview. I could compare this to my a cluster. For so, for example, I have a local mini cube running. Um, so in this way, I could kind of compare. Um, now I have a lot. I don't have this thing installed. I'm going to do a left join on that. So I can see here uh, this one specifically that none of these resources exist in my local mini cube cluster. But of course, if I was installing a new Helm chart or if I was, you know experimenting with some values and before I deploy those things into my cluster I can easily do a compare just to see how you know what what would change in my cluster before I actually deploy that into the cluster and then there's a there's a bunch of you know I'm just really <laughs> um, scratching the surface of all the ins and outs of of the features that how you can kind of uh, compare different things to each other and how that might fit into your workflow but specifically to helm uh, it, it's really helpful in the sense that it's easy to debug your Helm charts. It's easy to compare them to each other. It's easy to see what you might be putting into your um, into your clusters. And then of course, uh, you can also connect to your cluster and browse around what's in there similar to other cluster dashboard tools out there. So um, that's just really quick on Monocle Desktop. Uh, as said, free to open source, download it from GitHub if you want to try it out. There's also a cloud version of, just see, of Monocle. Uh, I wanted to show you if I can find the window because I'm sure it's hiding here somewhere. One sec. That's not it. There we go. Okay. So, uh, so you can go to app.monocle.com. You can sign in. You have to sign in with your GitHub account, it's going to ask for, you know, basic email address permissions. And um, this is really nice in the sense that you can browse any public GitHub repository. I'm going to go to, I don't know, anyone have a GitHub repo that has our Helm charts in it, in their uh, in their mind? Uh, we can go to Argo CD project. Let's see that shows up. Argo CD. Um, so this is basically uh, doing what the desktop tool does. Uh, it's going to show you all the stuff that it finds in your cluster, um, all the resources. Oh, sorry, in the Git in the Git repository. Sorry, uh, and allows you to kind of do the same kind of validations. All the stuff that I all all the stuff that I showed you, but it's a read only mode, so you can't make any you can't make any changes. It's something we're working on for allowing you to do, you know, create changes, create pull requests and kind of tie into the whole GitOps thing. But it's a really neat way if you have a specific uh, repo with a lot of, or with Helm charts, actually I should have showed you this one, but it just takes a little while to load. Um, this is the Bitnami uh, charts repository. It has 
a lot of charts. So this is gonna take a couple of seconds. So just bear with me and watch this thrilling animation. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, let me see here. Here, there are a lot of Helm charts in here. So you can see all the Helm charts uh, in this, um, in that repository. So let's just take one, MongoDB. Uh, here's the values file. Uh, and I can actually preview that as well. So we're actually uh, running Helm now on our server and uh, we'll show you the output eventually. This can take a while because we're some processing to be done. But these are then the resources that were generated with this values file for that chart. Uh, I can look at them, you know, once again, I might want to just debug things that are running. And also here we, of course, have uh, OPA validation. So let's just turn those on and uh, go back here. Well, fortunately, it doesn't seem like we had any big problems here. I think they're all. Nothing, nothing big to complain about uh, in this specific uh, generated value, but sometimes when you know, actually there are some errors here, yeah, you can see that there are some OPA related policy errors. So once again, you might want to check out a Helm chart before you deploy it to your cluster. Uh, you can do this directly in your browser. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to sign in with GitHub, obviously. And the final thing I'm going to push for here is that you can actually share these URLs. So I have a, sh there's a share click here. This URL is going to take you directly to this Helm preview. So if I open Safari now, which I haven't prepared, so this could go anyway. So I'm just going to paste that whole thing in here. Uh, it's actually going to take me to that exact space. So if, you know, if you're working with someone, you say, hey, look, I found this weird thing in the output of this Helm chart. You can send them that link and they'll get directly to that space so they don't have to navigate their way through all the clicks and things to find to get to that space and then they can of course do the validations and it's kind of an easy way to point people to things that you might identify in your git repos in this specific case so that was my very short demo uh i hope that was interesting and helpful uh we have a lot of things uh sergio's uh on the call we've spoken to the helm team um uh, there's a lot of other features we want to do for Helm, uh, uh, specifically around support for things. Sergio, maybe you want to talk to that. Yeah, we want to make not only easy to understand what is going on with uh, Helm chart, but also we want to increase the capabilities we have to, to manage Helm chart and also to produce new Helm charts. So we are adding support for repos. Um, we understand that Helm is going through OCI repository, so we are also going to be adding OCI repository management. Uh, you will be able to search and find and install um, Helm charts from OCI repositories um, in any of the worlds. And then we are working to increase the capabilities we have to make that easy. So templating uh, support for Helm uh, chart hooks and all these specific things on templating and creating the charts are also part of our roadmap. So. I hope that resonates a little bit with you guys, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I don't know, uh, any thoughts, questions, spontaneous comments? I mean, my first thought is, first, thank you for showing this. I, I was not aware of Monaco. Um, I know some people who could probably benefit from this, and I'll be sharing this with them. So this does okay. look good. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, that's uh, the best we can hope for. So thank you so much. And obviously, you can find us on GitHub and, and a bunch of places. So. I also thank want to thank you, thank you and the team for sharing this. Um, I ha have had the conversations with Sergio on. I'm, I'm the one he, he chatted with previously, so I, I I like this tool a lot. It's really nice, actually. So definitely want to see you know more folks from the community take a look at it, see what mm -hmm. features might be needed, and you know yeah. give give their their opinion. Great, yeah, and I mean. You know, uh, speaking of rabbit holes, there's a lot more you could do. You could combine this with customize, right? So taking the output of Helm then put, and then massaging that with customize. I didn't show you how to do that. That's also possible. And then once again, doing previews, validations, comparing to your clusters, all these workflows that you might have as someone deploying applications or managing configuration. So there's, there's a lot of ways you can kind of mutate these different things against each other based on what you're actually doing. But I'll stop there. Thank you. Uh, uh, quick question there. Uh, that, that's pretty cool, by the way. 
Uh, I guess I'd to use it with private uh, GitHub repositories. Does that come with like a subscription to the cloud thing or no, so, what's the idea? So the cloud is, it, it, for now it's only for public repositories. You're right. Uh, we don't have a, any commercial offering yet. Uh, obviously something we try to do, but if you want to work with a private repository, you can just use the desktop tool. Uh, you can clone private repositories there and 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 uh, do everything you want. And it has supports for you know creating branches and commits and pull requests and all that stuff. I didn't go into the kind of Git related functionality. So definitely if you're like, GitOps and you you managing your Git repositories, you can do that very nicely with the desktop tool, uh, even if you're working with a private repository. And one of the nice things of this is when you are when you integrate with some Git enabled, you can actually compare different versions of your ham charts in in Git. So you can go to a different branch or a different commit and you can see the, the evolution of your changes and compare what happened now, what would happen three days ago when things were working as expected. And all that kind of things are supported in both in the desktop and in the cloud. All right. Well, thank you. This looks really nice. Um, thank you. I'll be sharing it. The, my one recommendation is we have a related tools section in the Helm documentation. You it's might want to throw this up there. Okay, it's already up. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. All right, I didn't look. So, no, good. Well, thank okay. you for your time and the demo. Sure. Uh, Thanks for letting us, letting us show us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we do have some other things in the agenda. I want to make sure we get to those today. Uh, the next one up is, George, you wanted to talk about Helm Get Metadata? Are you on, George? Uh, maybe George isn't on. Nope. All right. So uh, I'll bring this up here. There is a something listed here about Helm Get Metadata. There's an issue and an accompanying PR. Um, so it's to add another thing to the Helm Get commands. We should go review it. Um, it sounds, the, the concept sounds reasonable uh, to get the metadata out of it, but we'll have to go review the actual pull request. So maintainers, I ask, please go take some time and take a look at this. Um, the next one up is, is I've got it, and that's the next meeting. Um, we are, or I should say not just the next meeting, but the rest of the year meetings. And we are entering a holiday season where people disappear and enjoy time off. And so we have, what, two more meetings slated for the rest of the year. Um, what are we going to be around for uh, when it comes to, to this this year? We, do we have people who are interested in a meeting next week? Eh. I'll be around next week. Oh. Okay. I'll be around next week, but if we if we have topics, if we don't, then okay, we won't, won't be. We could do a light meeting next week and see what we have. Um, and then what about the week after between the the holidays? I'm guessing we shut down. Everybody good to shut down? Sure. Sounds good to me. I vote shut down. We always shut down. So it's a, it's a little bit of a formality to say that. So the 29th, we won't have a meeting. The 22nd, we'll try to have a meeting and see who shows up. And then the next one after that would be the 5th is when we'll be back into the swing of things. And we should meet on the 5th because on the 9th, we'll be cutting a release candidate for 3.11. So we should probably have a meeting to at least talk about that. Sounds good. All right. So then we have one more, and I'm not sure who brought it up, but it's the copy dependencies on aliasing to avoid yeah, sharing chart references. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, yeah. So the, the thing is that we are facing that issue. It's very high level a problem when using uh, charts as a grandchildren of another chart. Um, what we wanted to come to the meeting or is to ask how we can support the reviewing of the PR that is open because we tested that PR is solving our use case. And so we just want to know how we can help so that it can make it to uh, a, a release, I don't know, in next month or whatever. Okay. I, I linked there the, the pull request and the PR. The author of the pull request uh, rebased recently the work and added more tests. And there is like a good explanation on how it is working, but we just want to make ourselves available to 
help in any way that is possible to have that review um, and understand the process of reviewing the PR and matching it. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to go take a look at this um, because copying it then brings about um, situations because so when you take a tar archive, right, not just something in disk, uh, you actually have to, everything happens in memory. It's actually one of the things that I like. It's a little bit more secure because you can't do, you're not dealing with the file system. Everything happens in memory. And so we want to make sure that the copying happens there without exploding any memory. So we'll have to go take a look at this one um to see how it is it sounds reasonable given the time of year we'll see what we honestly get with maintainers reviewing it it's a large one so you need approvals from two maintainers before it can move forward um and so well, i've we, opened this up and put it on my to-do list to look at that, that's amazing no we basically wanted to like put ourselves out there to try to help in any way we just don't know if there is anything that we can do to help uh, are you you're not the author of the pull request right no, uh, we're, uh, we're not the author of the pull request, but we we tried in our infrastructure and it's definitely solving our use case. So that's okay. why we're interested in going forward. Can you, if you have any comments, um, please add them to the pull request. And then uh, that, that will help us in reviewing it. Please feel free. And if you have comments on things that need to be changed or anything like that, please feel free to uh, comment in there. Um, for the person but it looks i mean it's a bunch of files but a bunch of them are test files so we just need to find time to go review this with everything else okay uh makes sense thank you everyone yeah and and i put it on my list of things i don't know whether i'll get to it before the end of the year but i'll attempt to and it's on my my list of a few things that i need to go after so that's amazing all right and and it, karen points out here now we need moderator notes and issue triage PR review for next week. Do we have anybody interested in doing those? Well, if nobody does it, I'll offer to moderate for next week. I can be here. I can do notes. Okay. I can do some PR review, but only, um, yeah, beginning of the week. <laughs> be gone. Understood. Enjoy, Enjoy your time off. Thanks. I hope you also take some time off. <laughs> I, I won't be Good. around between the holidays. I don't know if anybody Good. else will. I'm, I'm disappearing. All right. Do we have anything else folks want to talk about? Going once, going twice, going three times. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, thanks for the demo. Uh, this was great. And uh, folks, if I don't see some of you before the new year, I'll see you next year. Have a good uh, close out to the year. And some of you, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.